So in this challenge, we're going to be looking at how we can create a dynamic scale to draw a graph in D3. And how we will do this is we'll use the min and max methods so that if the numbers in the array change, the scale will adapt dynamically in order to cope and make sure everything fits. So I highly recommend you look at parts 24 to 26 before trying this because I also cover the D3 min and max methods as well as creating a linear scale, both of which we'll be using today. So to understand this, I'm going to go through an example and it will be a bit long, but I think it'll be really useful for at least the next few challenges. So what I have is I have this nested array with the with a set of x and y coordinates. So 34x, 78y, 79x, 411y, etc, etc. I have two variables height and width of 500 each. And then I've used a D3 to create an SVG canvas on the body with the width and height specified. And I've also set the background just so we can see it. So this yellow square is the 500 by 500 canvas we're working with. And then I've told it to create a circle for each of these sets of coordinates with a radius of five. And if you look closely at this top left corner, the circles have been created and stacked on top of each other. So now what we need to do is we need to set the CX and CY coordinates of the circle so that we can position them correctly. And we're going to create a scale for each of these. So first we'll look at setting the X coordinate. So I'm going to create a linear scale here using d3.scale linear. And I'm going to call it scale X. And the first thing we need to do is specify a domain. Now the domain is the smallest and largest values that the input, which is the x coordinate right here, can be. So the smallest value is going to be 0, and we can assume that all these coordinates are going to be positive. And when we're looking at the largest value dynamically, we want it to be whatever the largest x coordinate in the array was. And we can calculate this using d3.max. So for the first argument, we'll pass in the data set, which is just called data. And the second argument, we'll give it a function telling it where to look for the maximum. And if we take in a set of coordinates like this, we want to be looking at the x coordinate, which is the first element or at index 0. So we want to return set 0. Now we need to specify the range. And the range tells it where it can kind of create it on the graph. So along the x-axis, where it can go. So the minimum is going to be in this far left side here. And that's where x will be equal to 0. So our minimum is 0. And the maximum will be at this far right side here. And that's where x is equal to width. So we'll just put width here. And now what's great about this is that if width changes, this graph will scale accordingly. So now what we need to do is we need to let CX use a scale to calculate the X coordinate. So I'm just going to call the attribute method and we'll set CX and it'll be equal to a function which takes in a set of coordinates. And we want to find the scale X we want to use scale x to return the correct coordinate based on the x coordinate that we pass in, which will be at index 0. So we want to give it set 0. Now, if you look over here, the x coordinates of the circles have been calculated and they've been spaced out accordingly. So now we're going to do the same thing with the y coordinate. So I'm going to say let scale y equals d3 dot scale linear. And when we look at the domain, the smallest that it can be for the y coordinate is going to be 0. And to get the largest, we'll once again use d3 dot max, pass in the array. And this time, 
we wanted to look at the y coordinate, which is at index one. So we'll return set one. Now we're going to specify the range. So the smallest that we want our y values to be is at the very bottom here. And that happens when y is equal to height. Because remember, a positive y means going downwards. So when y is equal to height will be the minimum range, so the smallest the y value can be. So I'm going to put height here. And the largest the y value can be is up here at the very top. And this is where y is equal to 0. So now we need to set the cy attribute. And here again, it takes in a set of coordinates. And we wanted to use scale y to calculate the y coordinate. And we want to give it the y coordinate, which is at index 1. So now the graph is actually looking quite good. And it looks quite accurate now. So 3478 is here. Then we go to 79 and then 411 up here. But the only problem now is the max values, or if one of these was zero, the min values would also be affected, are kind of at the edge right here. So what we want to do is we want to add some padding to this. So I have a variable called padding here, and I want to add 30 units of padding on the x and y axis. And to do this, we're going to be altering our range. So if we look at the x range, and we want a 30, at least 30 padding to the left, the lowest value we can have will be padding. And the highest value we can have will be width minus padding, because we want to leave this much padding. And if we look at the range of the y coordinates, the lowest value we can have is right here somewhere, which will be the height, take away the padding. And the highest value we can have will be around here, but we still need to add some padding, so it will be just padding. And now we've pretty much got an accurate working graph, and all the square, all the dots are at the correct positions, and the padding has been added right here, so they all fit. Now the great thing about this dynamic scale is if I were to change one of these values, let's say I change the 79 to 1000, the whole scale has resized itself to make sure that we contain all the dots with the padding included. And I can do this also on the y-axis as well, so if I change it to 3000, the graph has changed accordingly. Now this one is actually a lot more simpler than this. So what it wants us to do is here, we have a Y scale and it wants us to set it correctly. So we'll say D3 dot scale linear. And we need to specify the domain and the range for this. So it says the domain should start at zero. So the first argument is zero and it needs to go to the maximum y in the set. So we have a set here, and to calculate the maximum y, it will be like we've done right here. So we'll do d3.max. The first argument is the name of the array, which is data set. The second argument is a function that takes in a set of coordinates, and we want to look for the y coordinates, so that'll be the first index here. So we need to return set one. Now we need to set the range. And what they've also told us is that there's some padding that we need to consider. So the lowest value it can be is right here at the bottom. So it'll be whatever the height is, and then we need to give some room for the padding. So we need to move it up by padding. 
So when we move it down by height, we say H. So we moved it down by height, and then we move it up by padding. And now we need to set the lowest value, and that'll be up here, where Y is zero, but we still need to add the padding on. So that will be at padding. And now that's all we need here. So we've set the domain and range for the Y scale. So I'm just gonna run the test now. And yeah, that was everything we needed to do.